Okay, so first things first is that its autos will be single attack until you reach um, 75. 75 and below are all the way until 50, you'll be AoE, right? So 100% all the way to 75 is single, uh, is single target attack. And there's there are chances for you to get marked in that period. What that what happens is that I'm not sure if I actually have this shown because basically a mark it looks like this thing. If you have this, you need to clear. And this bypasses veil, vale. so veil vale is really really useless in shiny. So if you have this, you need to clear. If you don't clear, you're fucked. <laughs> that's that's really about it. If you do not clear this, if any of your mem your party members have that that target thing on them, you need to clear that no matter what. So <laughs> if you fuck up and not clear, he will do that. This thing, this I have no idea how to pronounce this thing. That thing kicks your ass a lot. <laughs> it does a lot of damage. <laughs> you don't really have to bring a clear. No, it's. It's kind of nice to have, but you don't exactly have to bring because hopefully others will bring, but it's better for you to bring, kind of. <laughs> it's safer to bring in a way because I tend to bring as well because I don't really want to wait for clear at times. Unless so happen, I just get on really, really bad RNG where I just get like three to four marks in a row kind of thing. That usually doesn't really happen, but it does happen. So, yeah. <laughs> So you have to remember, that happens in the first 70, first 25%. So from 100% all the way to 75%, his, its autos will always be single target. And it will also have a chance on whatever it does to you, has a, on his autos that is. He has a chance to get you marked. This thing, right? He can bypass Veil, yes. That's why Veil is really, really useless in this. The only thing it can, and because the other reason why Veil is really bad is that whenever you reach to like say around, um, yes, around 75 and below, you have a chance like every single turn, you just get like a random debuff, right? So having Veil is a little bit useless there because you're only covering for just one, right? And you tend to not really want to bother with the debuffs if it's like useless ones. Like say, multi-attack for example is kind of like whatever in a way. Because it only lasts for like a single turn. Does it show here? Right? Does it show here? No, it doesn't show here. Random debuffs, does it show here? No, it doesn't show here, huh? But yeah, I remember like the likes of uh, the multi-attack, you can just skip a turn. Because... The multi-attack only lasts for a single turn. So you can just press once and it just skips. The the big ones are like the stones, uh, zombie, and probably attack down, I guess. Because attack down, it does reduce your damage quite a bit. So if you're planning to nuke, you really need to clear before you nuke kind of thing. But uh, the really, really annoying ones is the zombie and stone. But stone only happens on Deadly Flare, I think, if I recall correctly. Yeah, Deadly Flare at 55. That's why I tend to not really try to get 55 in a way. Oh yeah, you can get this as well, if I recall correctly. But this tends to only happen during Deadly Flare anyway. Yeah. I think the most annoying part when you reach in this area... Not here. I think 50, oh yeah, 50 and uh, 230 doesn't give any debuffs, if I recall correctly. Yeah, it doesn't. Did I die that time? I did, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> I fucked up that time, okay. So, the first 25, you already know, right? You have to keep in mind, it only does single attack targets. It does the, the, the targeting thing, this target thingy. That's the really important one to, to pay attention to. So the first trigger is 95, right? This AoE, win AoE thingy. Which is usually like whatever anyway. Because I think at most it does like... If it crits, if it crits, it does like 9,000 damage or so. If, if it's like cut, I think it should be 3k-ish? Yeah. If it crits, it's like right 5k or something like that. So usually you just 
I mean, for my case, I tend to just wait anyway if it's like super fast. If the run is super fast, I tend to wait. Because I'll just probably, if I auto, I'll just go through 95 without any lengths and that was, that would suck. <laughs> right? Do 10k? Yeah. So, it's a lot better if you can actually manage to sneak a... If it's not that, if it's not that fast, you can just probably sneak a turn in or whatever. If you, if you have the balls, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. It's just a win AoE damage thing. Um, do I have it here? Oh, I haven't started yet. So yeah, like that part, because it's kind of slow, so I went through anyway. For some reason, he has uh, paralyzed, so I just attack anyway. So yeah, you just go through with 95. So yeah, you go through. What happens that it will trigger this uplifting? So one of the, that's one of the reasons why you every time when you see me play shiny, I'll always press the the OK button every time I go through the. You see, like this. That's what I'm doing right now. I I'll just press the OK button. You just let everyone know that uh, that you have already gotten through. That's one of the, one of the the reasons why is a lot of people test to just press the OK button, right? So once you let everyone know, or you just let everyone know that you've already gone through, so. The people, the guys that are in there, that has dispel, will dispel that. Because having this upkeys can be quite annoying. <laughs> Especially like, you know when you go to like, say around this part, here. There are times where uplift just stays there. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you've watched my streams long enough, you've already seen that happen several times. And that would suck, seeing how he has two charge, uh, two diamonds increase every single turn and if you don't do enough damage and then you trigger reason and then rip you're dead right <laughs> okay so that's why that's why there's like always you should just say the okay button whatever and then you oh you are gone through so everyone can just if someone has a dispel dispel that simple as that and then it just proceeds to like the normal the normal autos same thing single attack whether it gets um whether you get marked or not, if you get marked, clear. If not, just proceed as normal. Nothing happens all the way until 85, right? Because 85 is kill, kill daily flare, whatever. So it's very similar to to the other versions, like on the uh, 55, yeah, 55. Can you dispel the quatre? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. But a lot of times people tend to not run quatre anymore. That's why. So. But yeah, you can. As long as you can dispel that, it will, as long as you have any sort of dispel, it will work. So anyway, I'll get to it that a little bit. I will explain a little bit more on that regard. So anyway, once you go through to 85, this thing can be really, really powerful. It can be really, really painful. You have to... Okay, so one thing's for sure. This, this guy is really, really old. This is like when... I remember using this when I'm running shiny for the first time kind of thing. This, that's how old this guide is. But it's really in depth, that's why I still kept it anyway to this day. So, 85 can be really really painful if you do not have... Uh, if your party has really really low HP, like say lower than 15,000 uh, 15, HP. And if you do not have... Especially if you do not have lengths. You have to have lengths for this. Because this hits really hard. Because he hits like a multi... A multi hit thing. And then the last one is like the BOOM! The super laser shit! <laughs> that super laser thing does a lot of damage. Like, I remember... If... Even with lengths... I can take... It takes up like at least 30 to 40% of my... My Earth's HP. Like, especially for example... I think my Alex has like 30,000 HP I think. If I recall correctly. So after that last hit, I remember there are times where I, my Alex just left like seven like 60% HP after that. It's like 60% of my HP just went missing. <laughs> that is just with flanks. But you have to remember that I do have a lot of HP on my earth. So if you do not have a lot of HP, if you only have lengths, you just still take a lot of damage anyway. So you have to be very, very careful on that part. So yes. So Lanxus is better off if you don't just simply press it. You should 
you should share it accordingly especially if you're in a very low level party okay low level i'm pretty sure you still can do it if you know the raid well enough i can assure you that it is still relatively easy to go to to clear this so you should always always share the languages you shouldn't like just go through uh hit multiple languages together kind of thing because that happens very often if uh, if the run is fast and stuff that is for kill flare right okay so that's for kill flare and uh, there's another version right around for some reason there are times where if you did not manage to go through 85 right for some reason if you're too slow and you nuked it at like say below 80 there are chances that you are gonna eat the white damage the white damage nuke sucks because it's like what 50 percent of your current hp or total hp right something like that i can't remember which one was it but there's like an ogi that does white damage this one yeah this one but does it show how much damage does it do it doesn't show does it but i know it's a whole it's really really painful <laughs> so make sure you manage to go through the deadly flare uh at, at at 85 because i think it's a lot better if you go through deadly flare instead of eating this white damage shit you know thank you really thank you i'm pretty sure it's really painful because i remember at that time where i actually gone through that my HP is like three quarter missing. It's like I have like thirty percent HP or something left. The moment I went through, it happens sometimes. It doesn't really happen all the time during like normal runs and stuff, but it does happen. When that happens, it sucks, but I think it's okay. <laughs> so, okay, so you have to pay that, uh, pay attention to that. Okay, make sure you try to go through kill flare. So, I mean, it's, it's not kill flare actually, it's daily flare. 60% of max HP. Yeah, that's why. It's really, really painful for that white damage. So, you should go through this. So, what happens is that if you want to be on a safe side, right? After you're going through this, when you manage to hit 80, you should at least use like some random skill or whatever to, to, to proc this. To proc this. Because it will have the charge diamond maxed out right the moment you do anything you don't really have to go through a turn as long you just press a skill or whatever like say for example the best one is uh, octo's uh, give me give everyone meter like yeah like that one what just happened because like you see not he's still at zero right but he's already 78 so you press something and then that happens it'll just go full right so usually what happens is that if you are still in the I'm just gonna imagine this is gonna be a low low level run, okay? So what's gonna happen is that you want everyone to activate its uh, this charge charge turn max thing. So if you have if any of your your uh, par uh, party members like your other bros and shit that has the uh, gravity, this is a very good time to do gravity. So everyone has a chance to put an attack in just so they can get closer to either break or 75 right that's the that is the the sole reason what you want to do during at this part because if not right someone has to go through uh someone has to go through another another what you call that uh daily flare you know quarter five stars yeah quarter five stars is really nice for this part <laughs> if you're still relatively low level and stuff it's nice to have but yeah, if not, someone has to go through like several uh, ogies on that. Which sucks because unless you're water, right? Unless you're water, you can go through this no issue. Then yeah, by all means, go ahead. So if not, the safest way is to get everyone to, to trigger this uh, full diamonds thing. And then you get someone to gravity it. So you, everyone in the, uh, in the raid has a chance to get an extra turn before going through uh, another ogi right because you don't really want to eat ogi in like in the beginning of this because deadly flare deadly flare is very very painful 
And usually what happens to this part is that water water bros tend to go through this because it does fire damage so it doesn't do so much damage to them and plus they have uno so they can just do like the 100 100 cut thing not really a problem kind of thing so yeah if not lengths is more than enough that kind of stuff <clears throat> yes that's how you that's how you do it yes so so that's a that's for 80 percent once you get 80 percent you go to uh once you manage to go through 80 percent stuff which is the 75 part 75 part is the one where it does a single a single target a single target nuke to one person and it swaps two black line members excluding mc into the front so it will swap re regardless right so for example that's why you always see that at this part I have only one character in the back, which is Sarah. So what usually happens is that Sarah will get swapped in, right? And then I go like, "Oh my God, where's my Octo?" You know, you always see guys, you always see that, right? So it really depends on uh, what kind of setup you're running with. The main reason why I put Sarah in there because I want to have another character, a character, to be a guinea pig for me, especially for the fifty one. The 50 trigger is our 4 hit random target 30% white damage hit uh white damage nuke. There's no way you can block this. This is super RNG. So and there's two of it, right? So there are times where I just would help to go through two of these. So that's why I would always keep Sarah in there because Sarah has substitute. And what happens is that Sarah will take all of the white damage and she just dies. So my like for example here my auto gets swapped out right so then my auto will come back after 50 so that's why i have a character that we substitute so if you're relatively still like on the weak side i really highly suggest you to have a character to have a substitute or whatever if you are say for example if you're running win or whatever um and so happen you have uno five stars you can use that guy <laughs> that works yeah, that works. He will definitely be very, very helpful during uh, this uh, 75 and below phase. Like in 75 to 50 phase. Okay. Is there any questions for now? Low and low should be go for more characters just for safety. Um, you don't exactly need to. If if you know what you're doing, I think it's okay. If you have like, say like my kind of setup and you know what you're doing, I think it's fine. Because the, 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 the party composition is really based on what... What kind of, uh, what's your, what's your role, or what you plan to do with your role kind of thing. It's not like, oh, I'm planning to solo out of Bahashi shell, right? <laughs> yeah, you know? <laughs> so it really depends on what kind of role you're planning to go for, you know? Because my playstyle for Shiny is very, is, uh, it's more like, I tend to leave the first 50% to the other, the other players. Like uh, the water guys, or say like the light guys, those guys shines really good, really well. The first fifty percent of the fight, like once it's go past fifty percent, that's where I will do my job and start nuking like crazy. Cause that's when uh, Earth's uh, characters you you see Octo. If Octo is still in there, you by the, by fifty percent you see Octo already have like three stacks or whatever. Alex will have like four to five stacks of her. Uh, uh, buffs or whatever so that that is like when earth gets you know start flexing and shit that's usually when earth starts flexing so it, it really depends on what kind of lineup you're going for what element and, and stuff because every element plays very differently in the likes of shiny right so two characters not just one yeah it swaps two characters so if you have two characters in the back the 75 it will swap two characters yes it will randomly pick two characters from the front and the two uh, two characters from the back line will go come to the front. So you just put whatever setup. So So anyway, 75, right? Single target nuke. If you have it's not a really you don't really need that. I mean it's 2018, right? You don't really need full cut anymore. So for this one, because it's single target, right? If you have mirror, if you have mirror, mirror image, whatever, that's great. Because you can mitigate 75 totally. For example, Tiamat 
full limit break call is really really good for this. You can just do that and you get zero damage from 75. Right? Just 100% 100% cut just because of that. Because mirror image will will uh negate any sort of single attack uh hit. If it's a multi-hit, uh it will still it will hit that character the second time. If the second hit lands on that same character, the second hit will be will be registered on the character. So, yeah, it, mirror does not work on AOE either, so you have to keep that in mind. So, okay, and uh, yeah, that's it for for seventy five, right? So then, what happens? It turns to AOE. Its autos will turn to AOE. This is the part where it hits really, really hard because. It's AOE, the the autos will have automated or RNG elements. It randomizes the elements. It hits all six elements. Baha can hit all six elements and it has a chance to crit regardless of what element. So if like even though your say your earth and then it hits you earth damage, it can still crit you no matter what. For some reason it that does that. Because even if I'm receiving water damage, it still can crit, but it's not as painful because... Like, if you're... If you're light and then you take dark damage, you still have like, some sort of uh, diff uh, extra... Oh, I'm, I'm toxic right now. <laughs> if you're if you're light and then you take dark damage, you have the, the little defenses on dark damage kind of thing, right? So, it's a little bit better. But you can still get crit anyway, so you have to keep that in mind. So if... If you're really unlucky, there's a chance for you to get triple attack there. So I just want to point that out. That's a lot. That's why a lot of times, like in my run, I try to have at least some sort of uh, damage cut to go through his autos. That's why, in a way, Sarah is really nice for this because she has a fifty percent damage cut and in she has a defense up uh, buff for three turns, if I recall correctly. The defense up is like whatever, but it still helps nonetheless, right? <laughs> The feel lets you create him as well. Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> Did you try to CA with Dirt EX for Water Switch before this? Um, you should do it after because it will remove. Okay, the other thing is that I forgot to mention is that at w once you reach 75, once you trigger 75, all of your buffs will be removed. He will dispel you at 75, right? Does it show here? Yeah, it removes... Yeah. Yeah, it removes all the buffs and the buffs that is a lot that is on your characters too. I remember 75 will remove. After that, it will not be removed. So if you want to uh, somehow negate, and if you're Earth like me, that's one reasons why I'm using Xeno as main hand now. So that's why I always try to somewhat keep. If not, I don't really. If I don't really care all that much, like if it's going, if it. If the rate is going fast enough, I just I just OG anyway, just look, whatever. But if you to be on a safe side, if you have if you're using Xeno Earth Sword as your main hand, it's good to OG at this part because it will switch to the it will switch all incoming damage. So all of its um, all of its autos will be water damage, right? It'll be water damage and you won't take that much damage it still can crit but not, not as much so that will help you survive a little bit better nonetheless right it really depends you can actually do it whenever you want but it really depends whether are you confident in surviving uh in that phase or not that kind of thing you know so like during this part i tend to always have at least one uh one sort of damage cut before i reach 70 and if I recall correctly, it's seven, the 70 trigger hits water damage? Oh no, light damage. So... Yes. Light AoE. And then it does this stupid annoying debuff thingy, you know, which you can kind of uh, dispel it if you have a character that can dispel, because you know, when you go through, it has that... This, this, this weird icon thingy. Yeah, this thingy. Because this does that random debuff thing on your character, on your party members each turn. You can dispel that. If you don't have dispel, that's fine, I guess. The only thing that you really need to clear is like, like I said earlier, zombie 
zombie and attack down is probably like the main thing you want to to take care of zombie is like the worst one so anyway 70 to 75 to 70 is really it's really straightforward it's try to do as much damage as you can just so you can skip as much uh, incoming damage from his auto so you can hit to 70 because what happens is that when you hit 70 that is the time where everyone should uh, go through similar as 95 you go through the ogi for 70 press the ok button let everyone know you're true that is when um no so, uh once it's below 75 you don't get marked anymore no so this part is when the person with the tor that your the tor duty <laughs> mr lemon that's your role mr lemon <laughs> so this is the part where everyone who goes through 70 trigger will press ok so just let everyone know that you have already gone through so the, the person that's on tour duty will hit tour here because this is the the part where it will tour will help a lot because it will, in, will decrease its uh attack the amount of incoming damage and you can do more damage because you can do defend down as well with tour and it has uh multi-attack reduction as well so there's a ch there's a higher chance for you to not get triple attacked in this part when you do Tor. That's why Tor is really really helpful at 70. I'm more like, it's really key to have Tor at 70. If you somehow do not have at 30, that's fine. If you have it at 10, that's even better. If you only have two Tor users, put it at 70 and 10. I rather, I think most of the time you can just skip 30 because 30 is like, not really a big deal honestly. So yeah, so you go through Everyone goes through, hit OK, go tour, and then you just do whatever. So, he shows here that 65, he gets immune to paralyze. So, if you manage to hit paralyze at that part, is this part, this is good because you can actually just go through at ease without, uh, why call that, worrying about any incoming damage, right? So, you can, uh, yeah, just go through. Yada yada, if you have a OP light user, this is the time to actually hit Paralyze. But if you do not have Paralyze, that's fine. As long as you have Tor landed, it's okay. Because you know, you take a way more damage than that as you can see on screen earlier. So... Yes, that's the, the thing you have to keep in mind. So, you just get it to 55. 55, it does another uh, Deadly Flare. But this Deadly Flare ha will inflict stone there's a chance for it to inflict stone and defend down so this is the part where a lot of people will be asking for clears if they actually go through c55 yes but a lot of times where in nowadays in my runs you don't tend to see excuse me a lot of times you tend to not see um you being able to hit uh how do i say you won't really trigger the ogi here but if you're somehow fast enough, you'll trigger the Ogi. But I'm pretty sure if you're fast enough to trigger the Ogi, you'll be tough enough to, 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 to withstand it anyway. So I don't think it really matters. A lot, so a lot of times where in my case here, I tend to be very wary. Meaning I would tend to wait behind for 55 because I don't really want to uh, take unnecessary damage here. Because I'm pretty sure a lot of, part, a lot of times here, the the other five guys will be able to push here right so with a push i'll have like a clear or whatever something to help out on a, if they are stoned or whatever because i don't i really don't want to get stoned especially when if i get stoned on my mc i would not be able to do anything so that sucks so usually i tend to wait and skip 55 trigger and i'll just have like substitute waiting on my sarah so what's gonna happen is like this is when the fun begins at 50 where you get white damage randomly for four hits this is the best part yes this is the best part because this is super rng if you do not have any any guinea pig to take uh, the damage you just have to pray and hopefully you don't get bingoed because what that means is that <laughs> the term bingoed is that your mc will take all four hits if your mc is at full hp will take all four hits and then your mc dies and you know, will not be able to do anything. That would suck, right? Because you can't cast any summons whatsoever. <laughs> so yes, that is the sucky part. 
that's why one of the reasons why in a way it's better to because like for this right my MC is like really low HP if you can see here it's quite dangerous to go through serious when your HP is around this much I can assure you that this will die your your MC will die in two two hits so you wouldn't want to do that <laughs> If your MC's HP is full, you can at least still withstand 3 attacks. So if, you, if, if your 4 hits, there's really nothing you can do about that. That's really just bad RNG. <laughs> so you just go through this. It's very straightforward for this part. You just go through this. And uh, yeah. It's me nuking because you still have Thor. If you have... Because... I, I tend to want to nuke before this just to get it to 50 just because I can do more damage since he has Taurus, debuff and all that because after when he reaches 50 the other thing is that it will remove all of the debuffs Baha will have all of these removed <clears throat> if a sub you won't kill your MC yes yes exactly that's why I have Sarah here she's there to take all the hits no matter what even though she has like 30% HP at most Right, right now, she has only at 50%, 55% HP like that. So, it doesn't matter. She will take all the hits regardless. Just make sure you don't hit the substitute button on your MC. I know some, some players uh, tend to run substitute on their MC. But that's that's only for the likes of, say, like Flare or the single attack hits like in a much later run or whatever. So now it's not really a good time to actually press substitute on your MC. Yeah, Sarah just dies for this. Just so I can uh, safely go through without taking unnecessary hits kind of thing. Because you have very finite amount of pots, right? You don't really want to burn so many pots just for this. Because for my case, I would only want to use my blue pot uh, when I go through the, the 40, right? Because 40 will probably hit like majority of the... You'll take most of the damage here because the 45 and 35 is like, eh, whatever, you know. So, I'm not sure why is there a full cut and a half cut because honestly, I, I feel like it's the same anyway. <laughs> but yeah, if you like, like, for example, Monica, she can actually sacrifice herself here and then you can revive her anyway. So it's just, just so you can use on a, a single white uh, green pot. You don't have to use a blue pot for this. So another thing is that, okay, I know I didn't mention this in the beginning, but because a lot of times that I'm only only joining co-op but if you really want to be on the safe side if you really 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 want to be on the safe side I highly suggest you to host this outside of co-op because you can get another extra blue pot by sharing it to your friends or pub it or whatever it's a lot safer you just share it to your friends anyway so you have one guy with the the no H, the lesser pot thing because the last guy will have will do a countdown and then right before he he enters your the, your other five players in that raid already will share the raid so they'll get an extra pot right so that's only if if you are really afraid and you need the extra pot kind of thing i highly suggest you to do that if the the party you're with is still really low level and whatever so maybe the last guy comes in is uh, like a lot stronger whatever he can just make do with one pot kind of thing yeah so where was i <clears throat> oh yeah 50 all right 50 so if this is the part where the fun begins right this is the part where the fun begins so in this in this phase in this phase for baha he has how many one two three four five six seven eight okay he has eight turns here the moment if the moment he gets full diamonds, when it has full diamonds, Baha is at full diamonds in this phase. If you press this orange button, the entire raid goes game over immediately. That's why it's a that's why it's a meme. Like, <laughs> if you're weak, I'm just gonna trigger reason. Haha, <laughs> so we'll fail it, kind of thing. Okay? <laughs> so this is the part. That's why they call it that's why they call this as a DPS check phase. Because doing enough DPS is the key here if you have fear if you manage to land fear here that's great because that's the part where the diamonds doesn't increase at all and you can happily just put in as many turns as you want kind of thing so yes so you have to keep that in mind okay so after that white damage thing it, activ it activates it 
activates this phase. You go full diamonds. Anyone, anybody in the raid, doesn't matter who, any single person in that raid, the moment it triggers this Ogi, when it gets full, full diamond charge, the first person, person press the attack button, it goes game over. It doesn't matter. Automatic game over. So, but because it's already 2018 and we are super strong and shit, you hardly see that ever happen. <laughs> Unless you're in a really, really weak raid, like your party members are low levels and such, that may happen. So, when that happens, it'll be great if you have fear here. Fear will help, or Typhoon will help. Because Typhoon reduces... Um, it will remove all diamonds, right? Instant game over, yes. <laughs> yes. If everybody did not do enough damage for this part, and they are all, everybody's at full diamonds here, instant game over, yes. That's how it is. Unless you so happen to aim, I'm not sure though, I haven't tried that yet. If you so happen to manage to do the last final nuke to get him to, to 30, like if you already have full diamonds but you nuke it past 30, I'm not sure that actually saves it. I'm not too sure because that never happened to me before. <laughs> if anyone in chat actually uh, did that before, do, do enlighten us, I would like to know as well. Oh, you can do that? Okay. <laughs> oh, you did that before? Okay. Because <laughs> that never happened to me before. CTS4. Ah, okay. So, okay. If you manage to get that, because this whole thing lasts for 20%. So, it starts from 50 all the way till 30%, right? Here. That's why this whole part is like one phase here. It goes from 50 all the way to 40, right? Yeah, <clears throat> try that now. So, you don't really have to worry about most of the things. You just need to you just need to communicate with your your raid members fairly well if you're still low level you need to go through properly and all this stuff you just need to communicate with them what they're gonna do and all that stuff so like for example what we tend to do before is that we will have two typhoon users if i recall correctly back in the day when we are still super weak and shit we have two typhoon users so what happens is that the summon pool hopefully the summon pool will be cleared so one person will do Typhoon, so another person can cross that Typhoon. So two players will have the diamonds cleared, so they can cause, can do more turns, right? Or get carry on stream. Yeah, you could do that. <laughs> yes, only yourself. That's why only yourself. So you have two players, cause you cast it or someone else casts it. Someone grabs that thing by crossing the summon. So two players at most will get it cleared. So if another, if you want to do it again, if it's not enough, you have another player that has Typhoon, cast Typhoon again. So you have another two players. So that means four players will be able to go through this, this phase again. And usually, you will only want to do this when when it's closing in onto uh, full diamonds, just so you, you can actually min max more turns kind of thing. So yeah, you just go through that and. Uh, yeah, so anyway for the 45 and 35 trigger is not really like a big problem I would say. Yeah, because the series is just a multi-elemental damage hit, right? Which as long as you have Phalanx, I think you're good enough. I don't really think you need more than Phalanx to actually go through 25 and 45. So it's 35, 45 is kind of like, eh, whatever, you know. It can kind of hurt. But I think if you have phalanx, it should be okay. If you're still real, if, if if you're still really scared, I guess you can just go hundred cut, which I don't think you need to. But if you're scared, I guess you can do it anyway. <laughs> Excuse me. So yeah. And besides that, there's also the forty percent series, which is exactly the same as fifty. So hopefully, if you if you have someone strong enough. It's possible to, to nuke from 40 all the way to past 35. It's possible. I did that before. <laughs> I did that before because that's when I when I use Shiva and I cross Baha full limit break there. That's when I managed to do like what five to six percent worth of uh, worth of damage because I have like full Ogi on my lineup kind of thing. So I just 
did insane amount of damage nuke at that time. So yeah, it's possible if you want to bypass that because I know some players to be on a safe side, they do not want to go through 40, so they tend to just wait and stuff. That's why for my case, I will always have Sarah to, to eat this, so I can actually somewhat try my luck on this. If I get bingo, there's really nothing I can do, right? Because my MC will be at full HP most of the time here. If not, well, fuck, right? <laughs> there's really nothing you can do. If your MC gets bingo, well, fuck, there's nothing you can do. <laughs> it's really RNG at this point. <clears throat> Pray harder here, yep. <laughs> And yes, you have to keep in mind that in this part, Baha would not do anything at all, besides the triggers. But yes, you cannot skip the 50. No matter what happens, you cannot skip the 50. I forgot to point that out. Thanks for reminding me. There is no way for you to skip the 50. If you want to go through this entire phase, you need to wait from 50 all the way till 30. Okay? That's one thing you need to keep in mind. So like, for example, if... For some reason, RNG just hits you so bad in the, the first 50% of the fight, right? And you do not want to eat serious because that's probably it's going to kill off your MC or whatever. You have to wait all the way till 30. That is a big problem. So technically, this entire phase, that guy will not be able to do anything at all. Unless it's, he has like langs or like clear or whatever that you need. But yeah. That dude will be a... Because that happened to me several times before as well. You just have to wait and stuff. Because if to trigger this phase, you have to go through 50 no matter what. Which which means you have to hit the the serious white damage thing. And this is the part where I face palm because I went through without lengths. <laughs> I went through 45 without lengths and I go like, fuck me and shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you can skip 40. If you do enough damage or you just let other people do damage for you, there's a possible chance for you to skip 40. But if you're still relatively weak, it's still okay. You can just bypass that and all that stuff. Okay. That's clear, right? <laughs> so yeah, you have to keep in mind, it doesn't do anything besides trigger. Baha will not do anything here besides the trigger. So it's 45, 40, 35. Every 5%. <clears throat> that's the Warlock run? Yeah, that's the Warlock run with the gold bar run. Yes, it is. <laughs> so... It's clear, right? At this point, I'm pretty sure you guys are clear already. Um, then once you're done all the way to 30... Oh yeah, I did mention it clears all the buffs, right? At this point. Once you activate 50, it will clear all debuffs. Oh yeah, I did. Okay. So, once you go to the next phase, which is 30% uh, 30, 30 and below. So, once you reach 30%, it will clear debuffs again. If any sort of debuffs landed during this phase, it will... Uh, it will uh, remove all debuffs. If like, before you reach the 30 thing, if you have like any sort of debuff here, like this, it will almost, like immediately get dispelled or it gets removed once you reach uh, 30. Anyway, once you pass through 30, it will remove all the buffs, whatever. And then what's going to happen is that uh, Baha will uh, activate a full charge diamond thing once it's at 28%. You have to remember that. Once you have to go, you have to remember go through the trigger first. If you have Tor, you have extra Tor here, this is the time where you want everybody to go through first, I think. But then, I feel like that's not really a problem, I would say, because it doesn't really re do anything. This is the part where some people actually do want to Tor here, but it's not really needed. You don't really have to press OK here. Like, as long you go through, the person that is planning to Tor here, as long you're gone through 30, you can just cast Tor. Yeah, that's what I remember too. So you don't exactly have to wait for everyone to go through here. As long as the person casting the Torn has to go through first, then you can cast Torn. Then um, 28 does just fills up its diamonds. Usually this is the part where some people uses Typhoon as well. Because they use Typhoon here, then they nuke all the way to 22 and yeah. 
Because <laughs> I remember I did that too and killed some people because I took Typhoon and he went all the way to 22. I nuked, he went all the way to 16. People die. <laughs> so yeah. That hap that that happens, but I'm pretty sure that only happens when the room is relatively strong, so. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, the charge diamonds goes to, to full here. Usually, it does like the normal, what, Optima Blast? Yeah, Optima Blast or something. It's not really that painful. As long you have, uh, as long you have, uh, lengths, I think you can just go through, you know. Like here, when it triggers the full, or, okay, so here's another, here's another thing that you may actually want to know. Nuking? Nuking before you go through 30 seems to be advisable if you're relatively on the low level side because what happens is that if the, the strong player managed to nuke pass for you what happens is that it will go to 28 before you triggering the 30 there's a, there's a chance for you to actually do something here so what happens is that it will trigger the 28 trigger when you still have you, when you still have not gone through the 30 trigger yet so what's gonna happen is that it will go ch full charge diamonds. This part here, that's why as you can see me what I did here. I did the octo skill too here. So when it goes to 28, right, it will go full diamonds here. And then once you tr once you attack here, what's gonna happen that it will trigger the 30 the 30% the trigger. So what happens is that you will not eat anything. You will just trigger the next phase or whatever. You will not need eat anything and once you've gone through it the full diamonds charge thing for 28 is, is already over so you can actually go through here at ease without any diamonds here right so you can do that it's possible to do that if you're relatively weak you can do this do this method sometimes i tend to do because that's what i did for this run <laughs> so you can do that if you want to bypass that a little bit if not you just have to use lengths, I guess. That really doesn't really matter all that much, kind of thing. Look at my fucking serious face and shit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's possible, yes. You can do that, yeah. So, see, then we have a Tor here, thankfully, as well, for this part. Then, uh... Yeah. Then this is the part where once it goes through 30, right? You have to remember, once it goes through 30, this is where it transitions again to its uh, different autos. So this part is the one where uh, it goes back to single target damage, single target hit for its auto, but it hits a lot harder than the first 25% because the first 25% was Baha using his tail. Now it's just using his arms and clawing the living shit out of you. This is the part where it does really really slow attack animations before but now it's a lot faster so thank god for that so this is the part where the auto has a chance to hit you 10,000 plus damage crit it's possible it hurts like balls <laughs> this person looks that guy looks salty i know right he's, he's not salty anymore at the end of this <laughs> so so that's the thing you have to keep in mind this part, 30 all the way till 10% uh, if I recall correctly, is the part where he goes single target and hits really, really hard. So this is also another part where maybe if you're using Xeno Earth Sword, it's the time for you to hit Ogi so you take lesser damage kind of thing. But yeah. So this is the part where you have to keep in mind, this is the part where majority of the players will start to do a lot of nukes. If if you're relatively on the higher level side because this part here a lot of people would nuke because this is the part where they a lot of players will have already reached turn 10 right so this is the part where all the jutans comes into play all the super ogies and shit comes into play you know like uh, octo acer uh wind stuff or whatever all that shit you name it this is the part where everybody starts to shine Except for water. <laughs> except for water and light. Yeah, except for water and light. This is the part where wind, earth, and water and uh, fire shines the most. In a way, that's true as well because you take lesser damage and shit, right? So that 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 will definitely help. So it will just take no damage at all if you do that. But you know, 
this is usually this is the part where post 30 percent is the part where everybody starts to nuke like crazy because you want to down it as fast as you can because the autos hurts the like balls and if so happen it has triple attack up Ooh, that was sound right because you do like triple attack and 30,000 damage Woo! yeah that have that that can happen and hopefully that doesn't happen you know so you try to get it down as fast as possible it gets to 22 22 he does the the whole where is it thing ultima blast thing here it does ultima blast it will remove all buffs on allies and also does water damage so if you're earth this is that this will not hurt all that much you can just do like whatever you can actually just go through without eating too i remember going through this trigger without any sort of cut and it doesn't really do that much damage as long as you're healthy i think it's fine anyway so yeah that's the thing you have to keep in mind 22 it does ultima blast if you have lengths i think that's more than enough because this doesn't hurt all that much so once you've gone through 22 this is the another fun part where you go all the way to 15 because the next trigger is skyfall the next trigger is at sky is skyfall and it's at 15 percent and the other thing that you have to keep in mind is that at this phase right at this phase if it's overdrive right if this dude is overdrive in this phase right like like for example this part here I need to get that thing out of the way first okay so like for this part his overdrive right if you trigger its ogi here he will do skyfall i just want to point that out because that happened a few times to to myself and some of my party members as well that happens keep that in mind he will do skyfall here if it's overdrive and you trigger its ogi here when it's full diamonds here and as in you already somehow attack four times and you trigger his ogi he will do skyfall you will not want to do that <laughs> so you will kind of want to wait if if you have like extra 100 percent lx or whatever by all means go ahead if not you just wait i guess yeah <laughs> yeah if not you just die <laughs> If not, you just have 100% cut, or if you have LX kill 2 up, it, that, that negates Skyfall completely, because that is a single hit, single hit, and LX kill 2 gives you unchallenged to everybody. So you will completely negate uh, Skyfall. That's why, Sky, that's why LX is so good here. <laughs> so, yeah. So besides that, at 15% at fifteen percent it will do Skyfall, okay? So if before that it triggers Ogi at Overdrive, it will also do Skyfall. Keep that in mind. So once it's past Skyfall, alright. And another thing is that once you trigger Skyfall, you will not be able to summon anymore. This is the part where the person who's planning to turn at 10%, he must stay behind. He must not, or she, must not trigger Skyfall, no matter what. Because if you trigger Skyfall, you will not be able to tour at 10%, okay? Keep that in mind. So the person who is at 10% tour duty must not trigger Skyfall, no matter what. <laughs> okay? Keep, keep that in mind. So, what's gonna happen is that, once you once you have like other five players going through like five percent uh, fifteen percent eat skyfall or whatever once you reach ten percent ten percent is the one that does the crazy big bang attack so this is the one where if you somehow have substitute and if you have 70 percent phalanx cut it will somewhat negate the damage completely but you have to keep in mind that big bang does do uh, is it really called Big Bang? Oh no, it's called Cosmic Collusion. Yeah, <laughs> that's the old name. So you have to keep in mind that it does do white damage a little bit because it's a multi-hit, right? It does plane damage and elemental damage. So if you do substitute, the white damage will all land onto MC only. So you have to keep that in mind. You can use Dark Bunker Langs for 100% cut. Yes, Hector as well. Yes, as long as you have 30% Dark Dark cut. Dark damage cut 30% is more than enough for Skyfall, yes. So, yes. So 10%, remember, you can actually do the substitute method, but your MC will take majority of the hits. Keep that in mind. 
and the other thing is that he gains this once you've gone through uh, the skyfall he will get this 3 plus 3 plane hit damage on each uh, each character and he has this de random debuff thing again this thing I can assure you is really really annoying and this is also the part where if if any character has like lesser I think was it 15% HP does it show here does it show here does it say right because I remember correctly if your HP is too low all right here there we go I forgot 5% if you have any party members that is 5% and below will immediately die if you have already triggered of uh, Skyfall here you will immediately die any member that has 5% HP and below will just die because because of, because of this this thing this whatever shit yeah so that's why this can be quite annoying to deal with if you have dispel then by all means I guess because usually I tend to not bother anyway usually at this point I just keep nuking until I die anyway Titan summon doesn't work nope you will just die you cannot summon anything here yes you have to keep that in mind after skyfall you will not be able to summon anything at all hello Mr. Zero okay so you guys are clear there's the important things that you need to know for this part so you have to remember this part here 5% and below you will die and then you cannot summon and this guy does plane damage at this part here so keep that in mind so any anywho once everybody gone through 10% this is another important thing because everybody needs to go through 10% this is the part where Thor 10 uh, guy that is on duty comes to play everybody needs to go through here that's why another part is that 10% people will have the okay sticker coming out again sure no worries so this is the part where everybody will do the okay thing again everybody goes through because you have to keep in mind that the person at the Thor 10 duty will not go through this. This will only appear at 15%. So he goes through 10%, he will still be able to summon. So that part, everyone goes through, he will summon Thor. This is the part where Thor is really, really helpful. If you are still low level, like your, your raid party is low level and stuff. Because this dude hits really hard. <laughs> This dude hits really hard in this part. And if I recall correctly, it's AoE, right? Yes, it's AoE. 10% onwards he to, to all the way zero. He does AoE again. But this AoE hits a lot harder now if you do not have Thor. But even with Thor, he still hits really hard anyway. So, <laughs> so this is the part where you really want to nuke as hard as you can after you've done your Thor thing going on and shit. This is the part where you really need to nuke like crazy because he hits really hard in this last 10%. Really, really hard. Because his AoE hits really hard, he does this trigger and all that stuff. Okay. So he does the daily flare thingy. This this five he has a 5% trigger, but it's not really that bad. Technically he can do unchallenged as well to get rid of it. But it's not really a problem, honestly. Oh, I just realized it actually affects us, inflicts as well. Oops. <laughs> so the, the person I said earlier has to cast Thor and wait, I think. And nuke on whatever, isn't it? So, yeah. Just nuke as hard as you can. Seriously, this, this part here is just really nuke as hard as you can. Because I'm pretty sure a lot of you will be really, really low here. And uh, yeah, you have to wait to 5%, right? Yeah. So... Another thing is that if so happen, the rate is going relatively fast. So happen, it's already five percent. Then you can just cast Thor. Then, <laughs> if nobody has, if you are waiting for the okay stickers or whatever, if you are on tall duty, that is, and so happen, nobody, not everybody has gone through yet. If it's already five percent, you can just cast it anyway, because whoever that passes through five percent will not 
will not uh, remove all the the debuffs or whatever. So the Thor will stay there. Yeah. That is if you're looking really hard at that time. If you have, if you have the likes of uh, Sarasa S four, or you have the likes of uh, CFT, uh, not uh, CFT S four. If you have the likes of SR S four, this is the part where you just use it and just bypass everything. <laughs> yes, this is the part. Nuke as hard as you can, because there's really nothing else to say about this part, honestly. Just nuke as hard as you can. If you want, just make sure you have lengths or whatever on 10% trigger, or if you want, you can just get lengths on that as well. If not, yeah. This is really- if you actually die at 1% well shit, right? What can you do? Because <laughs> that happens from time to time too. So, uh, yeah, that's really about it. The last 10% is fairly simple. And uh, you just need to do Thor if you're still relatively weak and shit. And then, yeah. So make sure, you, just make sure the guy is on tall duty. Just have to wait till five percent, because if he triggers ten percent, you cannot summon anymore. Because you have to remember that ten percent trigger does do this. So if you do Tor, if you already gone through this, you will not be able to summon Tor. If you summon Tor and then you go through ten, you you will remove that. <laughs> Will kill you without legs, just nuke it. Yeah, exactly. So this is the part where really everyone just just nuke it down. Because there's only 42 million here. <laughs> if you have enough nukes, if you can fully nuke this part, pretty sure a fully nuke like say earth, uh wind or uh fire, if they're doing the S4, this is the part where they'll do like what 25 million damage or something? So <laughs> If a fully decked out player, this is the part where they do just 25 million damage at one time or something. Or probably more. Because I remember I did 27 million at one point in this period here. So, yeah. So fairly simple at this point. It's very straightforward. And yeah. And that's it. That concludes my in-depth explanation on Shiny Guide. I know this is going on for way too long though. <laughs> Hopefully you guys find this helpful and uh, yeah, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe, am I right? Hey, <laughs> got them. <laughs> so uh, thank you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, man. And find this helpful. Lameo!